Experiment 6, calorimetry, calorimetry to determine the heat of dissolving of sodium carbonate. Well, I've got my setup here. I've got my temperature equilibrated water. It's approximately 100 uh, milliliters, uh, and then it actually turns out to be closer to 103 grams, 103 milliliters that I got by the time I weighed it out. My initial temperature, 25.5 degrees. I've also got uh, roughly... Uh, 10 grams of the sodium carbonate from experiment 4. Uh, I've actually got closer to 11 grams here. And the experiment, the, the calorimetry experiment that we're going to be doing is basically to add whatever it is, in this case the sodium carbonate, to the water and then monitor temperature every 30 seconds with time. Actually, I should take out my phone. I'm going to use my phone as a timer. stopwatch reset so because you're supposed to and please do record temperature every 30 seconds or as close as possible to that and I'm going to set up my table ahead of time with 0 30 60 90 120 180 um, etc etc and that way my table will be ready I've got my piece of paper with my data right here all right so I'm going to add it And it will take a couple minutes. Ooh, start my timer. Uh, it will take a couple minutes for it to dissolve at least. Just keep stirring, just keep stirring. My temperature, uh, all right. That zero, so that zero was 25.5 degrees time. My uh, temperature probe turned off. Thirty seconds, twenty-six point five. So already, uh, temperature has gone up a full degree. You can see the solution is still very cloudy. There's plenty that hasn't dissolved. Uh, the t color has changed to red for my temperature tester. That is also uh, sensitive to the ions in solution. So green when there's very few ions. Oh, Fifty-eight. Time 28.0. And all you're going to do is you're going to keep stirring and keep going until, uh, first of all, it's all dissolved and it's starting to clear up a little bit, you can tell. And until you hit a temperature maximum in this case, some of the other experiments are temperature minimums. Uh, this one actually goes a little bit faster than the other ones. Um, so especially the one with the ice, which takes a little while to dissolve. 130, 29.2. But you want a temperature of min or maximum, this one's a maximum, for three minutes. Oh, turn directions. Actually looking pretty close to all dissolved now. Nine, two minutes, 29.7. Uh, the one with the ice, I think, uh, when I pre-ran it, took uh, over 10 minutes by the time the ice gets and to get that low temperature. It, uh, if it starts coming back up, if it's a low temperature, that's a sign that your three minutes are up as well. But still, get three minutes of good solid data there. Temperature's still going up. Notice uh, two, hold on, let me take 29.9. Notice a couple things. One is I am not touching where the solution is. That's because I would just uh, transfer more heat either into or out of it with my hands if I was touching it down there. And then the other thing is after some initial larger temperature changes, I'm getting smaller temperature changes. Oop, my temperature turned off again. 57, 58, 59, 30, 30.0. So my temperature changes are getting smaller. So it actually went from 29.9 to 30.0 there. Now I'm at 30.1. Yeah. 
It has fully dissolved. Thirty point one. Keep stirring it. Actually, the stirring is important because you want your solution to be well mixed. You don't want local pockets where it is cooler or hotter. Those can make your data look strange too. I mean, the best thing I can tell you, 30.1, is keep stirring gently. And if you think you have enough data, go another couple minutes to make sure because you're gonna to have to check in with your instructor and if your instructor says you don't have enough data, then unfortunately you, you will likely have to do it again. And uh, nobody wants that to happen. So take a couple extra minutes. If you see some spikes in temperature that seem weird or uh, either high or low, it can happen that you're at a low, like especially when you're dissolving the ice, if you put the temperature probe close to the ice, your temperature can go way down accidentally for one of your measurements. Oop. 30.1, I missed one there at 4.30, 4 minutes, 30 seconds. So at 30.1, 30.1. So I've got two minutes, four readings in a row of 30.1. I think that's gonna be my max. Not going to stop though, I'm going for the full three minutes. Again, you can go, go a couple extra minutes, that's the key. Don't stop, um, because you could be asked to do it over again. Don't stop if your temperature probe goes off, like mine just did again. 30.1. That's five, one more. Patience, almost there. Thirty point zero. Okay, so my last data point actually started to come back down. I was at thirty point one, 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 thirty point zero. It will start to return to room temperature. And so if you see either a high in this case of 30.1 and then it starts slowly to come back down after three minutes, that means you're done. Most notably when you do the ice, the ice will go pretty low and you may have a minimum, let's do it this way, a minimum that comes down and then it might be say 14.3, uh, 14.3, 14.4, 14.5, that 14.3 is then your minimum there. It's the highest, or that, and for the ice, it's the lowest sustainable temp. For the um, sodium carbonate, it's the highest sustainable temp, which for me was 30.1 degrees.